we're going to talk about non-determinism. Keeping in mind our ultimate goal is to show that anything we can do with a, with a regular expression, we can do with a finite state automaton. That's our ultimate goal. Doing these proofs like the union thing for the next batches of operations is going to get really, really, really difficult if we stick with our current finite state automata. So we're going to relax what our finite state automata can do a little bit in order to make it easier to prove the rest of these operations. And the way that we're going to relax them is using non-determinism. So we're going to relax them using non-determinism. So we're going to be talking next about this idea of a non-deterministic finite state automaton. The ones we've been looking at so far have been deterministic finite state automata. Deterministic in this sense means they're only ever in one state at a time. They're always in exactly one state at a time. When you're in some state, there's only one state that could be your next state. With these non-deterministic finite state automata, we're going to say that you can actually be in multiple states at once. It turns out this is not going to be a more powerful kind of machine. Everything I could do with non-deterministic finite state automata, automata, I can do with deterministic ones as well. We're going to show that next class. But they are equivalent. This just allows us a little bit more flexibility as we actually draw or write down our automata. All right, so so far with our automata, we can have exactly one transition per character per state. So our rule with our finite state automata so far has been every state must have exactly one outgoing transition per character. And we're only ever allowed to be in one state at a time. The difference we're going to have with non-deterministic finite state automata is you can be in any subset of your states at a time. So you can be in any number of states at all at a time. So I can be in five states at a time. I can be in two states at a time. I could be in one state at a time. I could be in all the states at a time. I can be in none of the states. Any arbitrary subset of the states is allowable with this, not just one state at a time like we had with the deterministic ones. We're also going to be allowed to have multiple outgoing transitions from one state for a character. So we're going to be able to have like some state where we say, go to that state as well as that state on a zero. So we're allowed to have multiple outgoing transitions for some character. So we can say, like, let's take this state. And on a zero, you go into both of these other states is the way that's going to look. You have multiple outgoing transitions. We can also take transitions without consuming a character at all, without needing to use a character at all. So these are something that we're going to call epsilon transitions. So if I have an epsilon transition, this says that in order to take this transition, I don't need to have any input. I don't need to, to look at any input to do that. It just means whenever I enter this state, I also have entered that state. So whenever I've entered that first state, I'm also going to be in that next state. So if I have some transition on like an A or something that goes to that, that middle state there, what this is saying is that if I'm in this state and I receive an A, then next I'm going to be in both of these two other states. It's going to be convenient to do this, but yes, in this case, I could do the same thing. I could have the same behavior by just having two outgoing A's in this case. To give you an idea or to give you an intuition for exactly what, what non-determinism is trying to do or why this is sort of a, this might be a helpful thing. Let's say that you're, you're trying to, to drive to your friend's house. So imagine that, I don't know, it's post-apocalyptic world. You're driving to your friend's house. Cell phones are dead. There's no GPS. The only thing is you, your car, and your friend at his house. Your friend has given you some directions to his house. But you come to a fork in the road that's not mentioned on the directions. Which way do you go? So there's your friend's house. You're trying to get there. There is you on your car. And you, at some point, come to this fork in the road, and you want to know which way is the correct way to go on that fork in the road to actually get you to your friend's house. How could you do that? OK, so, so maybe you want to go left because it looks like the house is vaguely leftward. The words are in the way of the left, so you, so you want to go the right. How did you know that the words blocked the way of the left before you took the left? 
Yeah, okay. So you can take the left and see if any words block your way, and if, if so, you can turn around and take the right, all right? Yeah. Yeah, so you could do some sort of backtracking where you could like go left for a while and be like, oh, I'm pretty sure I should have been there by now, and then turn around and try to backtrack. But then you might end up with this issue where what if you took the left and like there was another couple of forks in the road that weren't mentioned. And then those forks had forks and the forks had forks had forks and so forth. And you've got now you've got a whole drawer full of forks. What are you going to do? Yeah. So the non-deterministic solution to this is you say, take both ways at once. So why not both? So that would be great if we could do that. If we could just take both ways at once, that would be super great. If I just said like... I don't know, I'm going to, to uh, split reality in two. And in one reality, I'm going to take the left fork. And then the other reality, I'm going to take the right fork. And the first one to arrive at the friend's house is going to be the, the reality I choose to live in. <laughs> so that is the non-deterministic approach to this, is whenever there is, there is some choice for which way to go, and it's not totally obvious which choice to pick, Try both, and whichever one gets you gets you the right thing, that's going to be the one that you do. That's the only reality that's going to matter. So if you have forks, and then you have forks on forks, and forks on forks on forks, then you're just going to be splitting reality all these different times, exploring all of these realities in parallel, until you find the reality that gets you to your friend's house, and then you say, yeah, the directions got me to my friend's house. So this is non-determinism. I'm going to give you an example now of a non-deterministic finite state automaton that's going to behave in this way. So this non-deterministic finite state automaton, it's going to be computing this language, third last one, which says my third from last character in my string is a one. So I want this to return one or to return true for any string such that it's third from last character is a one. So let's think about exactly what we might want this machine to look like. So certainly we want the path to some final state saying, if I saw a one and then I saw some other character and then I saw some other character, then I want to return one. What we want the end of the road to look like. We're expecting the end of the road to look like this. That once I see a one, if I saw two more characters and then I was done, we want to return one. The problem here, though, is how do I know that I wasn't going to have more characters after this one? How did I know when I took the transition for this one here that that was definitely going to be the third from last character in the string? So in order to do that, so I'm going to call this one the start state, and I'm just going to make a transition that goes from that state to itself on 0 and 1. So we're going to say, I don't know. I don't know when I look at a one whether or not it's going to be the next to last character. So I don't know whether I should, I should wait for more characters before I consider that one to be the third from last character. Or whether I should say that's going to be the third from last character. Let me make sure there's only two more after it. So I don't know which one to do. I'm going to take both forks in the road. So what this transition is doing is it's saying whenever I get a one, I'm going to end up in two states. I'm going to transition right on a one, but then I'm also going to say it stay in the same place. So staying in the same place is me basically saying, don't think that that one that I just saw is the third from last one. So I'm going to wait for more before I start marching to the right. Going to the right is saying, yeah, I think that that one that I just saw, I think that's going to be the third from last character. I just want to show you an example of this automaton in action. So the way that this is going to look is if I have like one, 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 zero, one, let's say. We want this to be in the language because this is the third from last character and it's a one. So let's see why this finite state automaton is going to return one for this string. So to start with, we're in just this state here. And the first thing we do is we read this one. And what do we do with this one? We stay in the same state and we move to the next state. So we're in both of these two states. And then we're going to read another one. So what am I going to do? Well, this state, it's going to transition back to itself. So we're going to be in this state still. This state is also going to transition to this one. So we're still going to be in this state. And then this state, this the second state, is going to transition to the third state on a one. So now we're in these three states. Then we're going to read the next one. So this first state, that's going to transition to itself. So we're going to stay in the first state. 
the second state we're going to be in because we transitioned from the first state to the second state. And the third state, we're still going to be in that state because we transitioned from the second state into the third state. And then the third state is going to transition into the fourth state. So now we're in all of the states all at once. Next, we're going to do the zero. The first state is going to transition to itself on the zero. The first state, though, this time does not transition to the second state on a zero. It only did that on a one. So we're actually no longer in the second state. The second state, though, we were in that second state before. So we're going to take that one transition that we saw in the second state and we end up in the third state. And then this third state, it was going to transition to the fourth state. So we're in the fourth state. But we were in the fourth state before. The fourth state didn't have any outgoing transitions, so it didn't go anywhere. That path just sort of died, so to speak. And then we're going to read the last character. So we have one. So the first state goes back to itself on one, and it's going to transition to the second state. We were not in the second state before, so we're not going to end up being in that third state. We were in the third state before, so we end up in the fourth state. The fourth state path, that one died. So now we've read all of our input, and we ask the question, is at least one of the states we're in a final state? Yes, so we return one. 